Hi everybody, today I'm going to show you how to use Apple's main stage application to control patch changes for hardware synthesizers in a live setting. We'll also use it to automate the launching of Logic Pro X project files for sequence songs. So to begin, I just want to show you how my setup works. Um, I have under Audio MIDI setup, I, uh, it's not connected right now, but I use a, a Mark of the Unicorn uh, MIDI timepiece AV connected through USB. And this uh, patch base slash MIDI interface has a bunch of different inputs. And I have a number of hardware synthesizers, uh, various vintages and uh, capabilities uh, normally hooked up to this. Um, I don't really use MIDI outputs from these synthesizers. I just want to use uh, main stage mostly to change the patches on these synths in, uh, in my complex live setup so that I don't have to have everything written down. It's much easier to use uh, main stage. So this is, a, a, like I said, a quick overview of how my uh, setup works. Uh, of particular note, I want to note here that I have a Behringer uh, FCB1010 foot controller, and this is mostly where the patch changes and the set changes occur. I have it set up uh, to change the patches just with a foot control, so it's much, much easier. So we'll just hide this. So the first thing we need to do is to use main stage. I have a project file here that I've set up. And it's actually very simple. You just create a basic layout. Uh, this isn't a tutorial on how to actually use main stage in its entirety. But in this setup, um, we'll show you what's really important on, uh, to make this work. Now, main stage is primarily sold as an application to have things like virtual synthesizers and plug-in modules and so on and so forth. Um, I don't use it like that. I use it strictly as a patch changer for my live setup. I don't use any of the built-in synthesizer functions uh, or keyboard functions in this. So my uh, main stage file really contains nothing but um, a layout with a set list. And up here I have a, a text field that shows me the current song currently chosen and some buttons down here to change the sets and maybe change the songs and you'll notice that each one of these is actually set to my FCB 1010 foot controller to control the sets as well as to switch between the songs. And then I have one more button here that I created and I've labeled it uh, open logic file. We'll use this to attach uh, logic pro project files. Um, of particular note though you want to make sure that the type is set to an on off. I, I, I like it like this so that I can use it as a momentary button. So let's get into uh, using this. Uh, so once you've set up the layout and make it the way that you like, um, we'll go to the edit mode. And the way that I operate main stage, I'm going to make this window a little bit bigger, is I always have a template file uh, created so that I can create patches out of this for different songs. And what I've done over here on the right hand side is I've created channel strips that are set to MIDI outputs. Now, if I select these, you won't see that they're working because my MIDI interface is not currently connected. But I have a channel strip for each one of my hardware synthesizers that I use in my live setup. There's no plugins, there's no EQs required. It is strictly to tell main stage which MIDI output uh, on the timepiece that the synth is, con is connected to and what channel the synthesizer actually responds to. So you'll see here I have a Phantom, an Andromeda, a Roland V-Synth, my Triton, and my Akai sampler, all on different interfaces as well as uh, channel numbers that they respond to. Uh, I have no um, strips in here that represent things like software synths. These are strictly MIDI outputs. Uh, to create these, you want to click on the plus symbol and you're going to pick the type. In this case, to create uh, channel strips for MIDI instruments, you pick external instrument and then you would pick, um, you know, the interface. Of course, my, like I said, my interface is not currently connected, so you would do that. So that's all really that's required to set up main stage to control external MIDI synthesizers. So let's make this a little bit smaller because we don't need that. We want to concentrate on here. So the first step in creating a patch change, um, I use folders for sets. So I'm going to hold down the option key and I'm going to copy this template in here and I'm going to rename this template file, say uh, demo song one and I'll make a duplicate. I'll call it demo song two and another duplicate, and I'll make it demo song three. 
So each one of these songs is going to have a different patch change sent to the synthesizer. So I guess we'll need this window open a little bit bigger. And the way we do that is, say for on the first instrument, I'm going to select it. What you want to do is go to the MIDI output and change, set the program change to the number that you want, say something like this. Um, you'll have to refer to your synthesizer's documentation uh, in order to send things like uh, banks most significant byte and least significant byte in order to choose things like banks. Uh, most synthesizers these days have more than 128 sounds which is what's uh, a limitation of the program change number. So you'll have to look up in your documentation. You'll notice that each one of my synths here is currently set up. Like on the Roland V synth, for example, uh, the MSB is 87. And then you can adjust things like the bank number in combination with the program change number to attain the, uh, the patch number that's actually um, in the synthesizer. So each one of these has a different setup for each one of those. So for the first song, I would go to the first synth and set the program change number and do the same thing for whichever one that I want, say different bank, maybe a different bank number there, and uh, the Akai is pretty simple. There you go. So that's the first song. The second song, you would do exactly the same thing. Pick a channel strip for the patch for the synth, set the patch number you, you want. I'm just kind of poking, going through here, poking around a little bit. So you'll notice here that each one of these synths, if I select a different patch number, You'll see here in the mini output, everything's changing. So we'll do the third one. Nothing's connected, so I'm just showing you how this is kind of done here a little bit. So the beauty about this is as you switch between songs, the synths uh, patches will change automatically. Um, in my case, remember these buttons here, the song number is uh, mapped to one of my uh, pedals on the foot controller. So all I have to do is hit one of the pedals and it switches the songs. So it's pretty much hands-free as far as this is concerned. So let's save this project. There we go. So this has uh, kind of the layout that I use for um, main stage. And if I go into performance mode, it basically looks like this. And I can use the arrow keys up and down to choose the different songs that I want or my foot controller. So let's talk about songs that might have um, some sequences attached to it through Logic Pro, and that's what I use for uh, sequencing. Um, the way that I work with this is uh, on a song that might have sequences, I like the visual interface to look a little bit different. So what I'll do is I'll pick the first, uh, say the first song here in edit mode. And for a sequence song, I like to just change the color so that when I switch between songs, I know I have a visual reference that maybe this song has a sequence attached to it. But what's really important is to have um, main stage with the, a simple click of a button that can be attached to, say, a foot controller to actually launch the Logic Pro project file. Now, here's a little bit of a trick. Um, you can't have main stage launch a file automatically because if I was to select this button, you'll see that there's some actions down in here. And what specifically we're looking for is under the actions menu is to scroll all the way down to the Apple script function. And what we can do here is we can write an Apple script to be launched when I click this button to actually go and launch the file and tell Logic Pro to start the song. So in this case here, we will attach an Apple script. Now I have a couple here that are um, set up and I'll show you how this works. So let's hide main stage for a moment and let's go to our Apple script editor. This is what an Apple script looks like um, that I will use to launch the appropriate song from main stage. The first thing is it's pretty straightforward. We tell the application Logic Pro X to activate. What this does is that it causes uh, Logic Pro to come to the front. So if I was to click that, it launches. Um, if, if Logic Pro is not already launched, it just comes to the front. Now, the next part, though, is a little bit more complicated because Logic Pro does not have an AppleScript library. It's not capable of accepting um, AppleScript commands. There's just no way of automating uh, Logic Pro. But one thing we can do, however, is we can send system events to Logic Pro to send it things like keystrokes. So for example, I can tell application system events to tell the process Logic Pro the keystroke return, which is the return key. In uh, Logic Pro, I think the default, that's the stop. 
Um, the next one I have here is called delay. Uh, all that does is it pauses for five seconds and then it sends the next keystroke which is space and that uh, causes Logic Pro to start the current project. So let's save this as a script. Now what I want to do here first of all is show you where these um, scripts live here for main stage. If you go to your hard drive, you go to the library folder, application support, logic, main stage scripts. Here's where you need to put the Apple script so that they show up properly in main stage. So once again, your hard drive, the library folder, application support, logic, main stage scripts. Um, I like to drag this over into my sidebar so I can get at it very quickly from an open or save dialog box in the finder. So you'll see here if I click that it just takes me right there. So in this case here we're going to call this uh, actually before we do that if I was to click this nothing happens because I don't have a project file open. So in order to launch a project file I've created uh, three different uh, demo songs here on the desktop. In order to do that, uh, what I like to do is just kind of click down to the end. You can click the record button down here and actually double click on one of these files. And now just switch over to the Apple Script Editor and click Stop. And you can click Compile here to see exactly what it ends up looking like. Is the Apple Script Editor now has recorded my action. It, it says, uh, tell the application finder, activate, open the document file, document one Logic Pro X of the folder desktop of the current users, whatever, of the startup disk. So this little function right here tells the finder uh, to open the file. So you can copy this part and put it right about here. So we want it to uh, go to Logic Pro and then tell the application finder to open this file. If I compile that, so if I was to close this and run this, you'll see that the project file is now opening. Nice. Okay. So let's save this Apple script in here and we'll call it play demo song one. I'll save this as a script. There we go. And I'll go to main stage. Sometimes you have to refresh. There it goes. Play demo song one. So if I was to go into performance mode, I can click this. Ah, but now we get an error. Now why is this? Well, the reason is is that it's trying to send an Apple event, um, but we need a little bit of a handler in there to to get past this. And one of the things I've discovered with this is that it's pretty easy to do. I'm going to clean up this script a little bit. First, I'm going to take the uh, the first routine to open Logic Pro, and I'm going to put it after the finder opens the file, just as a safeguard to make sure that Logic Pro does come to the front. So here's the handler that we need to add in order to make this work properly for main stage. We need to add this on action parameter try. And then down here at the end, end try, end action. The try function there is just a safeguard just to make sure that if this uh, script doesn't work that we don't get an error message on our screen. Now running this unfortunately doesn't work anything because all this does now is that this extra little loop that's added at the front, this, this, this parameter, um, just basically tells AppleScript to accept the uh, the event that comes from main stage. Don't worry about it too much. Let's just save it. We'll go back to main stage now, put a performance mode and just launch this file one more time. And you'll notice that there it goes. It starts. It opened the file and it actually waited five seconds. And then with the uh, spacebar command started playing the song. And that's what the event handler does down in here. See keystroke space start. So once again, if I was to close this file and we just pretended that the project file was not open, we slip between songs, 
click that one button, the project file opens, and within five seconds, the song starts playing. And that's all there is to it. That's how you use MainStage to automate patch changes with hardware synthesizers as well as to launch your Logic Pro project file using just a little bit of AppleScript magic. Talk to you soon.